Hey there. So there is a common misconception that Oxy-1 is just a four-track sequencer. That's completely not true. Using multi-track, you can transform this little beast into a 32 tracks sequencer. So today we are going to do something different. We're going to hook it up to Ableton Live and uh, we will sequence all stock instrument and I will create a drum rack and I'll show you how to use multi-track as an advanced drum sequencer. So before showing that part, I will go through the other three track and you can download both the Ableton project and the Oxy One project. Check the link down below. So on track one, I have a wavetable. It's a simple chord sequence. I also add some mod lanes to open and close the filter. I decouple the length of the mod lane from the uh, pattern length, so there's always an ever-changing modulation. On track two, I have an operator. Very simple sequence. On track three, I have analog. and everything together sounds like this. On top of that, I added the Ableton 808 core kit. I will use only eight instrument because multi-track only sequence eight instrument at a time. And let's listen how it sounds. So what is multi-track? Each row in this modality is a different track, is a different sequencer if you want. And each track can have a different MIDI channel, a different length, a different time division, a different start and end. So it effectively make one single page an eight track sequencer. Super, super powerful. So let's see how you have to set up Ableton Live to make it work with Oxy One. You open the setting page, and here you have to activate the input ports. Once you've done that, here you can select which controller is controlling the different instrument. In this case, it's going to be Oxy One, port one, and each one has a different MIDI channel. So my track one is MIDI channel one, track two, MIDI channel two, and so on and on. Then you arm the track, and now you are ready to go. Okay, so now let's create our drum pattern. Let's first load a multi-track on track four. How does multi-track work? You have eight row. Each row can be uh, assigned to a different MIDI channel, note, and it can have a different length, time division, start and stop, effectively making one single page and eight track sequencers. The stock uh, instrument in Ableton, the drum rack, usually react to the C1 octave. So be sure to select C1. And now each of these notes should trigger the note on our instrument. Let's try. Kick, which is C1. Then C sharp one, it's the snare, and so on and on and on. On the sequencer page, Basically, this is going to be our kick. As you can see, when you put down a trigger, it tells you which note you're putting down. So all of this row here will put down C notes. You can offset and change that by pressing the row, selecting the track. If you hold, the track will become orange, meaning that you selected that track. Then you press the sequencer number, and now you can offset the MIDI channel can offset the note. So now, let's create a basic pattern and then we will make it nicer. This is our kick. Let's add a snare. Some hat. And let's add some maracas on top. So now that we put down a basic pattern, some of the control you need to know. How to mute and unmute. 
If you press mute in any of the tracks on the first row, you will mute that track. If you do the same but on the last column, you will solo that track. And finally, you can mute any of the single step, just pressing them. So once you created your basic pattern, it's time to make it more interesting. And there's many ways you can do that. For example, let's play with velocity. Let's focus on the maracas. I will solo it. First things, I want to make this pattern shorter. So I will press end. And now I'll make seven steps. As you can see, the playhead on the other track is still 16 step, but in this case, it will just go to only seven step. Now, you select the track and then you press the velocity knob and now you are into velocity page. And now you can create the, this, this different feeling. We can add also some swing. So let's press shift and add some swing. Let's now work on this snare hit. I don't want them to happen every single cycle. So I will just press one of them, press step chord. And here on the tree, I will set two out of two. And I want the last, very last one to happen every four cycle. So four out of four. And also a retrig. Something like that. And even in this case, I can add more hits, then go into the dynamic, into the velocity page and add a different dynamic. Already way more interesting. Let's add some other kick. Let's go in the velocity page. And let's make this kick conditional. So every two. Let's bring back the chords. Let's make this symbol conditional every three, two out of three. Now let's change the hats. I like also the hats to have a different length, so let's put a 15 step sequence. So, in this precise moment, we have both the maracas and the close hi hat working at a different uh, length. You can also add a different time division. Let's see what it does. So we can select the maracas again. And then in the division, set it. This is 116 uh, triplet. But I like it in 16th. But anyway, the idea here is like each of the single track can have a different division, a different time. So that's really, really powerful. Bring everything in. There is another great way to create drums on Oxy1 and it's through the use of the drum pattern generator, which is inspired by the mutable instrument grids module. Let me show you how it works. 
First, let's select an empty pattern and then press the random button. Here you see three dark blue pads, which are the engine of this drum generation. You activate them and now, whenever I press play, the Oxy will start putting tricks for me. It's advisable to set the length of the pattern to 32, which is the uh, duration in which the entire uh, generation unfold. So let's set the end of 32. And also, to start, it's good to have a kick on track one, a snare on track two, and a hat on track three. But of course, feel free to experiment with any sound you want. Let's listen. <music> Very cool. Now, there's different way you can interact with this creation and change the outcome. There's different way you can change the outcome of this drum generation. For example, I want less snare hit. How do I do that? I select the snare, press the sequencer button, and now I have the pattern generation set up. So the first setting is density. Density is per track. So now I'm on the snare track. I will put less density. Let's list them. Then the other three settings are shared between all these three engines. It's X and Y, which it's uh, the algorithmic way in which the steps are divided between the X and Y axis. And here, feel free to experiment. It's where you will start finding nice idea. And then the last setting is chaos. Chaos will add variation for each cycle. So if you want a never changing pattern, you can add some of it. Let's say you like this and you can keep it. Now, the pattern generation works on top of the tricks you already placed. So if you had the other trick already there, it will add some spice on top. So let's say you want a kick always on the first step. You put it there and it's there. Also, let's work on the velocity. Another interesting thing you can do is using the LFO to modulate velocity or any other parameter if you want, really. Uh, when you press LFO, you will see on the first row all of these orange pads, and you can decide which track are affected by the LFO. So now I want the LFO only work uh, for the snare drum. So here it is. I'll select only track two. Now on the LFO page, I set a uh, sample and old, a random waveform. I will select the internal destination as velocity, and then I will set the amount. And as you can hear, now the snare hits have a different random velocity. Now you still have the other five track and you can add in things. So there's one last thing that I want to show you, and it's using uh, the mod lane to modulate a parameter inside Ableton. So, here I have mapped the release of the hat here. And I want to use the modulation lane of track three to change that. So how you do that? You press the MIDI mapping button here. You press this one. And now I will move modulation lane three. It automatically see the channel and MIDI CC. And Done. So now I have another layer of complexity. The fun part here is like mod lane length and division, time division can be decoupled from the one of the sequence. So, for example, let's set a 
and here. And now everything will be ever changing. This is really powerful because you can assign the mod lane and you have eight of them and also the LFO, you have two of them, to any parameter in Ableton. So it can make things really, really expressive and really, really complex. We hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button and subscribe to be notified when new stuff will come up. And don't forget, you can download OxyOne and Ableton Live project down below. I'll see you next week. Thank you.